What's going on beautiful people, Ed Governor right here and you are welcome to this episode of the tutorial. Today I want to show you guys my workflow on how I edit my portraits from start to finish and also sort of walk you through the process as I edit these photos. We're going to be using Lightroom and we're going to be using Photoshop as well. We're going to start off with Lightroom and make some minor adjustments onto the image and move over to Photoshop where we're going to make some big changes. It's worth noting that different photographers are going to edit the portraits in different ways and all that stuff but most often they always end up with the results that they want so it doesn't matter how you go about it as long as you get uh, the final results that you were looking to achieve I think that's what's most important uh, That said, we're going to be using Lightroom, we're going to be using Photoshop and I want to show you techniques on how I adjust the exposure and how I straighten my images on how I do skin retouching as well as on how I uh, sharpen the images so these are all tricks and techniques that people use in different ways and I want to show you how I do that that said I think we're gonna jump right into the computer and we are going to get started so let's open up Lightroom and poof, that opens up nicely <clears throat> And there we have our photo. So we're going to be editing this photo. And um, just as you've seen before, before and after, we're gonna try to walk through the same process and uh, sort of get this photo to where you saw it. So let me walk you through this. Now, when it comes to editing portraits, there's a couple of things that I like to do. And I like to think first, if I was going to post this photo just on Instagram, then I would probably start with um, resizing, which is uh, right here, cropping, resizing, and straightening the image. So the reason why I do this is because when you crop and you resize, it sort of cuts out the edges and um, it just saves you a lot of time. So if you had to work with these areas up here, then you probably, probably wouldn't do so if you crop it. So um, because I'm going to be posting this photo on Instagram, you know, Instagram has an aspect ratio of four by five. So I'm going to start with that. And let's switch that to four by five. And there we go. And now I sort of want to level the image. I want to um, level the eyes right here, as you can see. So I'm gonna go onto this slider and just pull it back and forth. Or you can take your cursor all the way here and just sort of click and pull up and down and see where that goes so I think somewhere around uh, somewhere around there if you ask me I said that looks pretty good to me I like the way that label looks yeah once that's done go ahead and click on enter or you click on that again and you are good to go now I'm gonna get off with the, the basic and basically what you can do here is just to adjust the white balance and you know take care of the exposure if it's something that you didn't nail while you were shooting so this is where I sort of start by fixing things and um, the first is gonna be the white balance and I just want to give it a, a little bit of a glow I wanted to have that warm autumn vibe so I'm gonna pull the temperature slider to the right side and uh, say something around that looks pretty okay yeah right there so yeah that's warm enough for me tint is okay and now we're gonna go over to the exposure I just want to give uh, a nice little exposure there so I'm gonna pull the slider to the right side till I am comfortable with what I have so let's keep on going and right there So I like the way that looks. Now we're gonna head over to contrast. And uh, with the contrast, I sort of like to leave it first without touching it. We'll get back to that later on. The highlights, um, they're pretty okay. The shadows, I think I would like to drop that a little bit to create some contrast. So we'll say something around, um, somewhere around there. Yeah, I think I like the way that looks. And now I'm going to go over to my whites. I'm going to increase the whites just to give uh, a little bit of pop to the image. And again, it's uh, working on that contrast, increasing the contrast. And if you don't know what contrast is all about, in layman terms, contrast is basically the difference between um, 
the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights if that makes any sense the difference between the darker shadows and the brightest highlights so if that difference is much it means your image is more contrasting and if uh, the difference is less it means you have less contrast in your image hope that helps anyways that's it so i'm gonna play with the white slider now and i'm just going to sort of uh, play with that around until say somewhere there yeah i like that keep in mind you always have to observe your histogram here that it doesn't uh, clip and uh for the blacks i'll pull them down a little bit to create contrast so your shadows and your blacks help with dark areas of the image makes it a little bit darker and your highlights and whites make the brightest the brighter areas brighter so increasing that difference gives you more contrast so let's uh, play around with that black slider i'm just gonna take it down notch and say somewhere around uh, yeah, somewhere around there yeah i think that looks pretty good okay for the presence basically the clarity sorry for the clarity i'm just going to leave that alone without touching it the vibrance and saturation i am still going to leave those alone without touching them and as you can see right here um my shadows are clipping and you would notice that it is clipping in the eyes that is okay that is okay because it's in the eyes but if not you can also pull it back and just where it doesn't clip say somewhere around there that's okay uh, i'm gonna go over to the tone curves and now i'm gonna use the curves to create more contrast in the image right here you have your shadows and here you have your highlights so if i pull if i draw a nice little earth curve it is going to help to create more contrast so i'm pulling the shadows down and i'm lifting the highlights once more so let's do that I like the way that looks and now let's pull those highlights up a little bit somewhere say there yeah i think i like that and again, um, the reason why I didn't uh, touch the vibrance and saturation sliders is because when you adjust uh, the tone curve, so increasing the contrast, it sort of increases the saturation and the vibrance as well. So I would like to do that first, and then I can go back onto these sliders and make the necessary adjustments. So uh, now I'm going to increase the vibrance to say about, uh, yeah, about eight like that right there and as for the saturation i will go somewhere say four it looks pretty good okay moving on <laughs> so once that is done i think the image is looking uh, it's come a long way and you can always toggle with the backslash key on your keyboard to see the before and the after so if you hit it you see the before and now the after so you can see how far you've come it always helps me all right, um, let's move on right now. We're going to uh, the HSL. And if you don't know what HSL is, it's basically the hue, saturation, and the luminance. And you can adjust these properties with these sliders based on the colors that you are planning to affect. I always like to start off with the hues first. And um, for the eastern pink, I'm going to adjust the yellows and uh, maybe the greens as well. And every other thing, I'll leave the way it is. So first, let's go with the yellows. I want to step it down a little bit to say somewhere, somewhere around there. That looks okay. And now for the greens, yeah, I think I think I'm just gonna pull it out. Yeah, pull all the way down to some sort of orange, yellowish tone. Moving on to saturation right now, uh, I'll play with the oranges as well and also a little bit with the green again. And for the oranges, I sort of want to increase the saturation of the oranges because uh, that is uh, the color where the skin tones lie. So I just want to give it a little bit of a pop. No, no, no those were the yellows. Uh, for the oranges, i say something around, yeah, something around there. I like the way that looks and by the way you can always toggle here to see how far you've come and i think i like the way the image is looking uh now onto the greens i want to reduce the greens a little bit 
I'm not gonna do but say somewhere around 58. Yeah, looks pretty okay if you ask me. Yep, I like the way that looks. And now on to the luminance. I think the red. Uh, let's see. Lighten the reds a little, as you can see on her nails. Uh, it looks a little bit dark with the nail polish, so I'm going to lighten it up a little. And boom, there you go. Yeah, I think I like how far it's come, so you can always toggle on and off switch to see how much difference your edit has made. And yeah, so you can see some um, green tints you know around this area of the hair and also here there were a lot of leaves around so i think they were casting that color so if you toggle this on you can see it's uh it's gone i like the way that looks skin's looking a lot more natural natural color so that is uh pretty good um when it comes to split toning i'm not going to touch that when it comes to details Sometimes I work with the details here in Lightroom to sharpen the image and reduce noise But for this tutorial, I am not going to do that the reason being because, uh, reason being I'm going to uh, do that in uh, Photoshop. I feel it's more effective there. So let's leave that Lens correction. I'm gonna leave that uh, Effects I'm not gonna touch that but uh, if you must know this is the area where you can sort of uh, add vignetting Onto your, onto your photo and uh, it sort of helps your audience to, to direct their focus where you want it to your subject so basically if you pull the slider to the left side you can see the edges of the photos uh, of the photo <laughs> sorry photo it's just one photo <laughs> the edges of the photo is uh, getting darker the edges are getting darker so it sort of pulls your attention to the center of the image which uh, where her eyes lie and her face which is a lot brighter and you know you're driving your audience uh, attention there which is a good way to tell the story so but I again I wouldn't touch that right now um, moving on transform effects camera calibration all those other things I am going to leave them um, the way they are that said, uh, I'm going to move on now and uh, I will do some slight adjustment on the image again. And here I sort of want to enhance um, the pop in her eyes. I want to pull your focus a little bit more towards her eyes. So I'm going to uh, click on the adjustment brush and go all the way down to uh, iris enhance. Uh, oh, I'm going to zoom into the image so I can see her eyes clearly. There you go. I'm going to go into iris enhance and um, I'm just sort of going to click and also paint around the iris so that's going to help and um, if you want a guided aid on as you're painting you can hit the, the O key on your keyboard and it's sort of going to bring out this uh, red mask which is going to lie underneath the areas you're painting or both the areas you're painting so you're just going to paint that gently on, the, on that iris and boom that looks pretty good i'm gonna go over to the second eye and do the same thing paint over that it doesn't need to be you know spot on painting so for those of us who are horrible at drawing of precision um that's okay all right so now that it's done uh i'm just sort of going to zoom out and i'll toggle that off again by hitting the o key and you can sort of see it's the eyes or the iris is a little bit more exposed i'm just going to toggle that on and off so you can see the change so you can see it's very minimal but again very important and i just want to adjust it to my taste i want to add a little bit of green tint onto her eyes because her eyes have this greenish look so um I'll add some tint in there say like so yeah, that's pretty okay. And also, I just want to increase the saturation a time to like, yeah, right there. Let's double that before and after on and off. Yeah, I think I like the way it looks. Okay, boom, that is done. So this is how far images come. This is uh, this is the before. 
and this is the after drastic change right yeah before and after so right now I think um, this is how far I would go with the editing in a uh, Lightroom so the other steps I am going to uh, proceed with them in uh, Photoshop and for you to do that you're just going to right click on your image go to edit in and you select Photoshop and once you do that it's gonna take some time not so much time except you have a slow computer like mine um, and then it opens up in uh, Photoshop all right so once that opens up in Photoshop we're going to proceed with uh, the editing so in Photoshop this is where I like to do I love the big changes I like to do the skin retouching I like to do sharpening and all the stuff okay so but the first thing I like to do when I get into Photoshop is I like to do the skin retouching so for me to do that I'm going to uh, create a I'm going to duplicate this layer by holding down command J or Better yet, you can just click on that background image there and pull it all the way down here and boom, you have a copy. Again, I always like to label the copy so I know exactly what I'm doing with that layer. And let's just say, label this skin retouch. Yeah, okay. Um, once that is done, I would go ahead and select the spot healing brush and I'll just sort of zoom into my image and uh, also maybe increase the size of my brush a tiny little bit yeah so right there that's okay and basically what I'm going to do now is just to go around the skin and pick out the blemishes and uh, sort of replace them with all the areas of the skin so what photoshop is doing here is basically sampling different areas of the skin which are much smoother and uh, overlaying those smoother areas on the areas that you select that you think uh, have blemishes so it can make it look a lot smoother and visually appealing so this process takes a little bit of time so for the sake of the tutorial for your sake I am going to speed the process up so you don't have to sit for hours and wait it doesn't actually take hours but you don't have to sit for so long so I'm going to do this but I'm going to speed up the process so it goes faster so let's get onto it Boom. So I think we're done with the skin retouching now and um, done with uh, fixing the blemishes on the skin. The whole process of skin retouching is not over yet. So toggle on and off and you can see, I, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see. This is the before and then this is the after. So we've just kind of given the skin a much smoother feel onto it. Okay, so once that is done, the next um, process that I like to go ahead and use here is uh, I use the frequency separation technique to make the skin even smoother and to blend it. And what this process does basically is it separates the skin texture from the skin tones and it allows you to sort of even out the skin tones without affecting the texture, if that makes any sense. Anyways, I'm going to show you right now. So the first thing I do is to make sure that the skin retouch layer is selected. Hold down Command J, duplicate that layer. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to uh, say skin tones. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate that layer again. Command J or Control J if you're on PC, and remain, rename this skin texture okay I'll just make sure that my skin tone layer is under my skin texture layer that's very very important and uh, just go ahead and select these two layers by holding down command and clicking on the other layer then again you hold down command and uh, G so you're going to group them into one group it's a lot of commands here <laughs> anyways um, so now that they are in uh, both in the same group <coughs> 
we're going to go ahead and toggle off the skin texture layer toggle that off and make sure your skin tones layer is selected we're going to go all the way up to filter click on that and drop down to blur and where you find Gaussian blur you click on Gaussian blur blur and uh, you sort of want to set the the radius to a value where you just start to see the skin get blurry so say somewhere around um, somewhere around six yeah somewhere around six yeah that works pretty fine so you can toggle that on and off to see six is okay click on okay this might uh, vary depending on your image so make sure you you see where the skin starts to get blur blurry and uh, now you're going to make sure that the skin texture layer is selected and then you're going to toggle that on and you go all the way to image up here and um, you go to apply image and here it's important that you make sure that the layer which is selected here is a uh, skin tones layer so go ahead and select that set your channel to rgb and when it says blending the blending mode should be in um subtract subtract perfect your opacity should be at 100 your scale at 2 and your offset at 128 so you're gonna click ok and boom that is going to mess up your image wow good editing skills but don't worry don't mind we're gonna fix that just make sure that the skin texture layer is selected you go all the way up here to your blend mode click get the drop down and you make sure you select linear light in boom your image is back now you wouldn't see any change onto that image and the reason for this is because photoshop hasn't actually done any change or you haven't made any changes but the only thing you've done is you've taken that image you've separated the skin tones from the skin texture so now you can work with the skin tones independently without necessarily affecting the skin texture so let's get on with it now we're going to go back to the skin tones now that we've separated them and we're going to go ahead and select the lasso tool you can click on it on the left side on this left panel right here or you can just uh, hit L on your keyboard and the tool is going to be selected now I am going to zoom in a little bit into the image like so make sure that your skin tones layer is selected and um, with this stage it's important that you are able to tell which areas of the photo have similar light and so for example if you see this area of the forehead it has similar lighting is much brighter so i'm going to select those areas with similar lighting and go ahead and make a selection like so those areas with similar lighting and okay once that is selected i'm going to go all the way to uh filter again click on that go to the drop down where it says blur and again you're going to select gaussian blur and here you are sort of going to play around with the slider until you see that the image is sort of the area where you've made your selection is sort of uh, smooth and even with respect to the tones okay so i'm just going to take that gradually take that value up and see where that sits good so say somewhere set 20 you can toggle the preview on and off do a little bit more yeah say somewhere around 28 that works for me i'm gonna hit okay that's fine and again i'm gonna come back and select another area with uh similar lighting and just repeat the process after you make your selection go all the way to filter blur gaussian blur Play around with that slider until you get that desired look you're going for. So there, and now onto this other side. So I'm just basically going to forward this and save you a lot of time. But you know you need to repeat this process over and over. Pick out those areas with similar lighting and select them, and then apply some Gaussian blur onto them to even out the tones to make the skin much more smoother. So let's go.
now I think we're done with the frequency separation process and uh, I just want to sort of show you guys the before and after and some other steps that I use so I'm gonna make sure that the image fits back into the screen and then you see if I toggle that on and off you can see how much change that has made to the image so I just like to select the skin tones layer here and play with the opacity a little bit and before I do that I always make sure that this uh, layer right below it is turned on so just play with the opacity tiny a little bit and see what that gives us and if you don't like the results you can as well go back again and repeat this process and so so you can clearly see some um, good details in the image right now the skin tones are evened out and um, the details are properly preserved so you can see without that skin tones layer where you had made adjustments um, to skin tones and with the layer so I think it's looking pretty good I'm just gonna leave the opacity at say somewhere around 80 that is fine and we are done with that layer let's fit that to the screen and now I'm going to proceed with some sort of uh, say color grading the image and the way I like to do that I like to use the selective color one of my favorite tools here in Photoshop just do that by clicking on uh, this button right here and uh, the properties are going to pop up for your selective color um, I'm going to start up with the blacks. I always like to start up with the blacks and again I want to create more contrast and the way I want to do that this time is by using colors Okay, if you're familiar with the color wheels, then you would know that uh, there's some colors that complement each other So for example blue and orange or yellow uh, Green and red and so on and so forth. There are a lot of complementary colors So I would like to use blue and orange or yellow for these portraits. So um already the skin tones as you can see are somewhere uh, uh, around the orange color so that already has helped and now I'm going to add some more blues onto the shadows to sort of give some more color contrast and um, once you select the blacks here you can dial down the yellow value and it's going to increase um, blues in the blacks or the shadows so let's, uh, let's see how that goes so, yeah, right there as you can see it's a little bit too much so I like it somewhere around yeah 13 seems to be okay yeah and also you can you can add a little bit of cyan if you will yeah just a tiny thing a little bit so somewhere around two okay now with the blacks let's go to the neutrals and you can just go to each of those colors I always like to play with the blacks neutrals and um, the whites so these three I like to play with so I'm done with the blacks now onto the neutrals and here is where the skin tones usually lie so you can decide to add a little bit of orange or yellow in this case I'm gonna leave that at one also you can add some magenta if you will and see how that works um, let's say plus one. Nah, I'll just leave the magentas. And um, for the whites again, we go with the colors that complement the highlights, which is uh, yellow, the warmer colors. Yeah, I just uh, tie a little bit of that in the whites. Now on to the reds. <coughs> Focusing on her nail polish, I just want to make it a little bit darker because the image is getting a little bit contrasting. Make it a little bit darker, and yeah, that looks pretty okay. All right, if you ask me, I think that is looking pretty okay. So now, one of the last steps that I, I do is after all this, I like to sharpen the image, give it a little bit of sharp, makes it pop and a lot more visually appealing. So um, the way I like to go about this, <coughs> I feel like I almost have to type this every time. It feels like typing because you have to hit so many keys at the same time. You're going to hold down Control, Alt, Shift and hit E. 
So four keys, make sure the top layer is selected first. I'll do that again. Make sure your very top layer is selected. In this case, it's my just uh, it's my selective color. Make sure it's selected, and you're going to hold down Command Alt Shift or Control Alt Shift if you're using PC, and you hit the E key. So four keys, and now it's going to take all these layers right here and match them into one single layer. It's going to be called Layer One. So let's uh, just call that Chapman okay make sure that layer is selected and with that layer selected you're going to go all the way to filter go down to other and select high pass okay so again you want to play with the radius values here and just sort of slide it back and forth and you want to keep it where you just start to see details in the image so in this case I think somewhere around 2.5 or 3.5 yeah somewhere around 3.5 yeah somewhere around 3.5 works quite well hit OK and again that messes up your image wow I'm really good at messing up this image okay let's fix that uh, we're gonna go over here to the blend mode again one more time and click on that it's gonna drop down and we're going to change the blend mode to something like overlay hmm. and you can see how much change that is made already you can toggle on and off and you can see it just I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, how that affects your image that's before and that's after it just makes it pop a little bit and you can I always like to I always choose between um, these three blend modes overlay soft light and hard light they work differently for different image images so you just have to see what works best for your image so in this case I'll try soft light as well I think the effect is a lot milder yeah uh, hard lights the effect is a lot more pronounced yeah it's a lot more pronounced so I would say with this blend mode overlay is uh, somewhere in the middle soft light is a lot milder and high light is a lot uh, hard light is a lot stronger so it just depends on um, what image you're working with and also I think it depends on how much uh, of the high pass you added onto it so I didn't put so much so I think this works just fine but in the case where you had so much say for example you had about maybe 10 or something then you can always play around with the opacity to reduce that effect so if I take the opacity down to zero there's absolutely no sharpening and if I take it up to 100 you can clearly see the sharpening on the image okay so yeah I think we've come that far and now you can clearly see um, how much of a change that image has come through so I'm just gonna show you guys the before and the after this is the before before we got it into Photoshop and this is after we're done with the editing so before and after and there we have it just a quick workflow my workflow as regards to how I edit my portraits from start to finish and again it's like I said it's worth noting that I would do this in a different way depending on the portraits some portraits I would just edit in Lightroom and some other portraits I would use Lightroom and Photoshop so there you have it okay guys thank you so much for watching I hope that this video was in some way helpful to you if it was helpful to you make sure you go ahead and click the like button down below and if you're new in here make sure you go ahead and subscribe as well and until next time I'll see you when I see you